and it's time again for another episode of Production Tricks. Today we're gonna take a look at how I like to process my piano sounds. Here it is. That sounds cool and let's take a look at the processing on it. And inside of Ableton here we have a fab filter, a uh, Fairchild, uh, auto filter that's doing something in the breakdown of the song, so it's not active all the time. I have a portal doing something. Do you know this one? It's from Output. It's a great kind of granular um, creative plugin. It's great. And some sidechain to the good old kick. But most of the work is being done here on the EQ and Fairchild. So let's take a look at my EQ on the channel. Oh boy, okay, that's quite a bit. <laughs> and um, I will have to say that usually I don't do this much, but when I recorded this, I only had a stereo pair of Royer microphones, and those are ribbon microphones. They sound lovely, but they are pretty dark, and they're not perfect for recording piano. They will give you like a character sound, but you will have to go in and fix some things afterwards. So what am I doing here? Um, let's listen again to the piano so we can see what do it's doing in the spectrum. So this area here, I'm dipping the frequencies when it's playing the bum, bum, bum. And uh, I wanted to take those a little bit down so I could make the overall level of the piano come up. So if you listen to only this one. And so, so on. So every, every tone, dum, dum, dum. I dip them a little bit down. Well, actually a lot here, it's like minus 14, almost 10, which is a lot and then again, for this song, I just had to do it this way. And I give it a little bit of a low end, almost on the 80. It's just to give it a little bit more like a oomph down there. Um, and uh, then I have a lot of high end on the 2300 kind of hertz. I have a compressor now. Uh, so after I fix all these problems, because what would happen if those frequencies, bum, 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 they were like pushing a lot into the compressor. So I take them down and then in the Fairchild, I. Now you see they're not going crazy if if um, when they're playing those notes. If I take them off, not bypass them here, take the Fairchild again. Now you can see what it's doing. So it's going crazy. Um, so that's why I do that. And a good way to find the frequencies, you can actually see here, down here, the a fat filter cue, it has a piano here. So it's really important to actually, you can actually just pick a note like this. You can move them all like this and try to be precise with it and be pretty narrow. So you only get that frequency and take it down. Uh, what I usually do is actually, I, I tend to do a little bit too much on this phase. And uh, when the song has gotten further along, I tend to just do like, take all of them like this and then back them a little bit off like this. But here I, I think I think we're in the right, I think we're in the right spot with them. And also, here's another extra tip for you. If you go like this, hover off over again, and you have a scroll wheel, you can do like this. Look. Basically, I use this for everything. Uh, it's kind of like my MIDI controller for all the buttons inside of Ableton. You could, like, hover it over anything. So if I do like that, do like this. And also, if you pick the frequency itself, you can do like this. You can uh, adjust the cue. Literally, this is a lifesaver for your hand. Please get a mouse scroll wheel. It will save you. Like I use it for everything. I I can show you another plugin like this. See that? Instead of doing this, that's gonna hurt your hand. Don't hurt your hand, kids. Don't hurt your hand. <laughs> okay, enough about that. There is another piano 
and the song piano lead. Let's listen to that one. Beautiful lines played by my good friend Christian Hrannar. Shout out to him. It was a great session. We uh, recorded, I think, three songs that day. So this is just one of them. <laughs> the other ones are coming out. He's the most incredible, incredible uh, musician. So on this channel, I have a virtual mix rack by Slate Studio. I'm using the Neve uh, EQ to kind of shape the sound. So let's listen to what it's doing. Funny thing, I'm not doing that much on this channel as I usually do. I think it's just because it's already so high up and it's it's already has the sparkle it needs and uh, in the track it just doesn't... You can hear it well enough, so I didn't have to do that much. I didn't even do a lot of heavy EQing. So what I did on the other piano, I didn't need to do on this one. So there's no right or wrong with this. Don't go copying my settings for the other channel, please. I'm compressing it quite a bit to just just to make it like behave in the mix. Yeah, I'm compressing it quite a bit. If I take off the compressor. It's still really nice. It, it, it was just that in the song I just needed it to be really like have a compressed song. It was a kind of a musical choice. It just evens out the notes a little bit so you hear all the notes. And yes, that's how I usually treat my pianos. Remember to subscribe, like, and uh, comment, and uh, <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.